We've got a busy restaurant here. Yeah. It's uh, uh, when you when you're at maximum capacity. How many you how many cabins? Yeah, it's do you about have? 120. We have yeah. a little PDR room in the back there, which yeah. we open up um, as well as doing the sort of main dining in here. So about 110, 120 when it's sort of at its maximum capacity, really. So um, it can be a bit of a challenge, but yeah, a good challenge at the same time. So it's never an easy question to answer. But how would you describe your food? Never an easy question to, to answer, like you say. Um, but I think, you know, people ask me that and ask a lot of chefs that I think on a regular basis. And I, I do really sort of say to myself, it goes with in terms of um, how, you, how you're feeling in terms of, I think, you know, as I've got older, my views on food have changed. My likes and dislikes have changed. Um, I very much believe in working with the seasons, you know, from a very sort of young age that's been sort of, you know, bestowed upon me, really. So I would say in a nutshell, my cooking is really based seasonal. Um, try and keep it light and fresh. Um, classically based, definitely, but that's my training. Mm. With a bit of innovation, really, so um, something along those lines. I'm a big fan of seafood, um, personally, eating it and working with it immensely. Yeah. Um, so, you know, where it's possible, you know, I try to, to work with that, really. But I wouldn't say I have a particular preference on any particular ingredient or type of food, but I do enjoy working with the seafood, you know, immensely. So. Well, you've got some classic dishes here and some interesting ones, but you've got some other things which are quite exciting, aren't they? I mean, the, the savoury brioche with asparagus. Tell me, tell me about that one. I think I'm just very lucky to work for someone like Peter Prescott, who uh, allows me and gives me, the, you know, the the chance to sort of express myself, you know, in, in the right way of the boundary. Uh -huh. I think, you know, of all the people that I've sort of worked for, he's probably one of the only probably the one who have probably done it the most, really, so I really must say thanks to him for that, really. But I think the menu itself, you know, we try and change it very as frequent as possible. Yeah. I'm very lucky that I have that, you know, at my armory where I can sort of just change things from day to day, depending on what's available. Um, this particular dish you're talking about is um, a take on a, let's say, a sweet pan padu, which people most normally know as a pan padu as. Sure. But we sort of serve in a savoury way, so we take some brioche, um, we make like a little duck cell of mushrooms, and we sort of layer that in between the brioche, and we bake that off, and that's basically our loaf, so to speak really and mm. um, we then sort of slice that pan fry that really and we set that with some braised spring baby gems some white and green asparagus some St George mushrooms and a little white bean puree and some truffle um, so I think taking all the beautiful things that are in season putting them together in a hopefully a bit of a different way I think vegetarians get a bit of a raw deal sometimes really so I try and make a bit of an effort um, and try and give them something that they can say is quite memorable or they actually enjoy yeah um, so we do try to keep things classic but with a little bit of touch of sort of finesse involved in the cooking and I think we're trying to get that balance right. So I'm going to do with something that's very popular at the boundary. We do it every Sunday. It's the dobe de boeuf and we use the ox cheek which we colour beautifully in a bit of olive oil, so like vegetable oil rather, sorry, and butter. It tastes nice and dark and then we braise that for about two and a half, three hours with some nice mirepoix which is carrots, celery, some leeks, a little bouquet garni, some red wine and also some veal stock for about three hours in the oven so it's very soft and tender and then beautifully glazed and that gets there with some beautiful mashed potato and some nice root vegetables like baby carrots, some celery, some turnip maybe and some nice smoked lardons of bacon and that gets paired together all together in a nice bowl and it's a very rich hearty dish but one that works very well on, I think on a winter's day oh, also yeah. it's become a bit of a novelty here at the boundary people know that they come here for Sunday not Sunday roast but Sunday dough now um, so I think we're, it's good that we have a menu I think that across the board sells pretty evenly and quite consistently so um, I think um, we balance that off obviously with some nice classical dishes at the same time a nice little prefix menu at the same time so I think we try and cover all bases uh, but trying to keep the menu ticking over nice and fresh and not just stagnated really so um, we're lucky to have that. And how often would you change the menu? Uh, well, the girls in the reception probably tell you probably too many times, really. But, <laughs> I mean, more of our monies, but you know, we change it quite regular. I mean, yeah. sometimes I change maybe one or two dishes, you know, okay. every other day. Yeah. Um, a week doesn't go past when something doesn't change. Let's just put it that way. So. I think obviously we're a French-based restaurant, um, so I think it's important that we have you know things that are very synonymous with French cuisine, mm -hmm. um, but like say slightly modernised, you know, using ingredients that um, are in season, putting them together, and allowing the ingredients to speak for themselves. You know, we're not really about a lot of foams and that kind of stuff here. You know, we're a classical-based restaurant um, with some finesse and um, some style. So yeah. Like I like to kind of build a wine list according to the normal route, but always have something completely outside the main track. Uh, something exciting, something new, something to challenge uh, people, something to just, you know, get, get them exciting as well. Uh, so it's a bit of a mixture actually on, on, on the list, uh, just for that mainly reason. Um, like for example, just, just now we have like a Malvasia from Croatia by the glass. Why not? Yeah, yeah. 
Is that, do you get many wines from Croatia these days? Um, yeah, a few are coming now. Yeah, a few, a few. There is definitely some really good, uh, some good suppliers bringing some, some Croatian and Slovenian, uh, and uh, some, some kind of much more Eastern European. I just bought a, a Georgian wine actually. Really? Yes. Interesting. Uh, and very interesting. But that's exactly that. It's interesting, and sure. the wines is good. So why not? Saperavi. Saperavi is the oldest grape vines on the planet. So you know that's exciting.